December 8, 1980. A peaceful evening in New York City turns into a scene of unimaginable tragedy. John Lennon, icon, musician, and advocate for peace, is gunned down in cold blood. Who was Mark David Chapman, the man behind this shocking crime? What twisted path led him from admiration to murder? In this episode of Whispers of Guilt, we uncover the haunting details behind Lennon's final moments and the mind of his killer. Our podcasts delve into complex and sometimes deeply unsettling events. We understand the impact these narratives can have. Should you find yourself in need of assistance or support at any point, we strongly encourage you to reach out to your local crisis centres. Your well-being is paramount and help is available. Imagine coming face to face with your hero and then taking his life. John Lennon's murderer did just that, driven by obsession, rage and a notorious book. Stay with us as we dive into the chilling story of that night in December, where admiration turned to violence and a music legend was lost forever. All right, so today we're diving deep into a day that truly sent shockwaves around the world, a day that continues to fascinate and haunt us. You know what I'm talking about, the murder of John Lennon. It's one of those events that gets burned into your memory. Absolutely, and we're going beyond the headlines today, folks. We're going deep. We're talking magazine excerpts, news articles, those Wikipedia rabbit holes, all to piece together a more complete picture of what happened. It's about understanding the context, the people, the ripple effects. Exactly. And I think it's important to remember, especially for those who may not have lived through it, this wasn't just a tragedy. It sparked this massive, and I mean massive, conversation about fame, fandom, even those darker sides of idolization. Stuff that feels, honestly, even more relevant today, right? It's eerie how much it resonates, even decades later. Right. So let's set the stage. December 8th, 1980, New York City, John Lennon. He's back in the music scene after five years away. Five years. A lifetime in the music industry. Totally. And his new album, Double Fantasy, yeah. it's flying up the charts. He's doing interviews, his single. That just like starting over, it's a hit. There was this palpable feeling of new beginnings. Exactly. A fresh start. Optimism. A resurgence. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're going to get into the events of that day, but I think it's important to highlight this wasn't just a comeback for Lennon. It was like a creative rebirth. He'd found his voice again. He wasn't living in the past. He wasn't trying to recapture the Beatles' magic. He even said as much. That's right. There's that famous Playboy interview from that year. He talks about how carrying the Beatles or the 60s dream around all your life is like carrying the Second World War and Glenn Miller around. Wow. It's powerful. He was done with that, ready to move on. And his music definitely reflected that. Take Starting Over, for instance, when he sings, this time I'm going to take it slow, just like the first time. It's like... He's not just talking about his music career, is he? It's deeper than that. It's about approaching life, love, with this renewed sense of purpose. You know, this isn't the John Lennon of the 60s. Right. This is John Lennon 2.0. Exactly. Older, wiser, and tragically, that's the John Lennon the world lost on December 8th at the hands of Mark David Chapman. 25 years old, no criminal record. But a deep and honestly disturbing obsession with Lennon. And, wait for it, the catcher in the rye. Yeah. That's where things get really interesting and troubling. Okay, so we got to unpack that. What's the connection there? Well, Chapman saw Lennon as this hypocrite, preaching peace and love, but living a lavish life. He'd fixate on lyrics like, imagine no possessions, and get angry because, well, Lennon clearly had possessions, and a lot of them. So much for imagine. Right. But here's the thing. Instead of just disagreeing with Lennon's lifestyle, Chapman decided that violence was the answer to this perceived hypocrisy. It's a chilling contradiction. Absolutely. And it gets worse. Lennon, he wasn't Chapman's only target. The guy had a hit list. David Bowie, Johnny Carson, Elizabeth Taylor. It's unsettling. Deeply. What do those names tell us? What did those figures represent to Chapman? This isn't just about one man's actions anymore. This is about trying to understand the mindset. You know, what could lead someone down such a dark, dark path? You know, one of the most haunting things about December 8th is how utterly normal that day seemed. It's like there's this eerie dissonance between the everyday moments and the tragedy that's about to unfold. It's a stark reminder that history, even tragedy, unfolds amidst the mundane. Exactly. Like earlier that day, Lennon and Ono, they're doing a photo shoot with Annie Leibovitz for Rolling Stone, no less. And get this. 
It was John's idea for them to pose nude. That's right. That image became iconic, raw, vulnerable. Knowing what happens later, it just adds this whole other layer to it. Right. It's heavy. And then they have that interview, that RKO radio interview. Where he actually talks about being a fan himself, collecting autographs. It's chilling in retrospect. It really is. And then they went to the recording studio working on Walking on Thin Ice, which was supposed to be Yoko's big breakout song. Life moving forward. Plans being made. No idea of what's to come. None whatsoever. And of course, we have to talk about that first encounter with Chapman earlier that day. The autograph signing, that photo. Witnesses said Lennon was, you know, kind, patient. It's hard to imagine knowing that was the last photo of him alive. It really underscores the randomness of it all. It does. It does. And this is where these little details, they become tragically significant. Mm. The fact that when they returned to the Dakota that night, they exited the limo on 72nd Street. Instead of the more secure courtyard. Right. A seemingly insignificant choice. Mm -hmm. But it speaks volumes about how there was just no sense of foreboding that night. None whatsoever. And then Chapman. The nod to Yoko, that glance at John, mm. and then the shots. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Some reports even say he called out Mr. Lennon. Got into like a combat stance before firing. Though it's worth noting, Chapman himself says he doesn't remember saying anything. It's those inconsistencies, those gaps in memory that make it even more disturbing, you know? Absolutely. But one thing's for sure, this wasn't some random act of violence. This was planned. The use of hollow point bullets. Which are designed to cause maximum damage. Exactly. It points to premeditation. A chilling thought. And then that image of him just calmly sitting down after shooting Len, reading Catcher in the Rye under a lamppost. I mean, come on. <laughs> the police, realizing how bad it was, they rushed Lennon to the hospital in a squad car. Faster than waiting for an ambulance. That's how desperate the situation was. Absolutely. And then at 11.1 first p.m., the official pronouncement, John Lennon, dead. That timestamp, it's more than just a medical detail. It marks the end of an era. I mean, how do you even begin to process something like that? The world stopped, you know? It did. It's hard to overstate the impact. This wasn't just a famous person dying. This was a global event. It's because Lennon... He was more than just a musician, right? He was an icon, a symbol. Absolutely. It. Peace, change. He embodied the ideals of a generation. And the world, the world grieved. Crowds gathered, vigils. There were even reports of suicides. People so distraught they took their own lives. It's a testament to the profound connection people felt with him, his music. And his message. And it's not surprising that his music became a source of comfort. Starting over, imagine. They topped the charts. All that unfinished work he left behind. Those posthumous albums. It solidified his legacy, that's for sure. It's like proof that art, real powerful art, it can even transcend death. It's a powerful thought. Now Chapman, on the other hand, pled guilty. Second degree murder, he got 20 years to life. And he's been eligible for parole since 2000. Every single time, denied. This year too. Which begs the question, what does justice really look like in this situation, you know? It's a question that's haunted this case from the beginning. Is it about punishment, rehabilitation, or simply protecting the public? And then there's Yoko Ono. She remains firmly against his release, fears for her safety, the safety of Lennon's sons. Another layer of complexity to an already complex situation. It's a lot to grapple with. And as we try to wrap our heads around all of this, as we reach the end of our deep dive here, yeah. I think there's some lingering questions that we should all sit with. You know, why is this event, even after all these years, why does it still hold such power? Why does it still feel so raw? What does this say about fame, about that bond, that sometimes dangerous bond between public figures and their fans, that dark side of idolization? And then there's Chapman's claim that he wanted to promote Catcher in the Rye by killing Lennon. It's a bizarre claim. It really is. What do we make of that? Was it a misguided attempt to make some grand statement mm. to attach himself to something? It's a question worth pondering. You know? mm -hmm. And here's a final thought to leave you with. Imagine, just imagine, if social media had existed back then. How would it have shaped the narrative? Would the news have spread faster, the grief more immediate? Would it have amplified the darkness, fueled conspiracy theories? Or could it have, and this is interesting to think about, could it have been a source of comfort, of connection, during a time of such immense global mourning? It really makes you think about how different the world was and how much social media shapes our understanding of events today.